What's up everyone and welcome back to the MMA Zone. Today, let's get started with John Jones sends cryptic message on Twitter. Just when we thought the UFC was all steam ahead for a fight between Stipe Miocic and John Jones, a social media post from Bones has folks wondering if maybe the fight will be postponed again. As you likely recall, Jones and Miocic were supposed to fight last November at the UFC's annual card in Madison Square Garden, but Jones seriously injured his pectoral muscle while training and the surgery shelved the fight. In more recent weeks, there's been endless speculation and debate about who and when Jones will defend the heavyweight title against, but Bones and Miocic and the UFC president, Dana White, have repeatedly insisted that the plan is for the fight to go down this year. Well, due to this very odd post Jones apparently made via X and then deleted, some are wondering if the fight could get delayed. Getting half my finger cut off at the Los Angeles airport. Now, if that wasn't odd enough, here's some other posts that Jones apparently made and then removed from his feed. As this video is being produced, there's been no official word on whether Jones did indeed mutilate his finger or if it's just another bizarre message from the champ. Let's face it, it's not like Jones hasn't made headlines a bunch of times before on account of antics and or unfortunate incidents. Up next, Daniel Cormier disagrees with Kamaru Usman. Recently, Kamaru Usman outlined why he doesn't believe that Alex Pajeda has made a strong enough case yet to be considered in the best pound for pound debate. But one person who clearly doesn't agree with the former welterweight champ is another generational great, Daniel Cormier. On account of Pereira's historic run to date in the UFC, Poetan won the middleweight and light heavyweight titles in just two years. There's been a lot of talk about where he sits in the pound for pound discussion. The debate has been making the rounds even more so because Pereira has repeatedly said he wants to fight for the heavyweight belt. If the Brazilian star were to win a third UFC title in a third weight division, Vision, he would be the first fighter ever to do so. That would say a lot about Poetan being the pound for pound best, right? Well, as noted, Usman believes that Pereira isn't one of the best pound for pound best, since his wrestling and ground game hasn't consistently been tested in the UFC. But in a follow up response from DC, he made the case that his buddy is wrong. All right, guys, tomorrow Usman's wrong. He's my brother. I love the guy. But in this instance, he's wrong. We're not determining a fighting style. We're determining if the style that you have has allowed for you to be successful in a different weight class. For that, Alex Pereira gets an A+. He was the middleweight champion in the year. He's the light heavyweight champion with two title defenses. So while I agree with you, Kamaru, on this fact, he does not seem to have a pound-for-pound -pound style when putting it up against Makachev or Jones or all those guys. But the style that he has is pom 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 because it is proven through fact not any more hypotheticals we don't have to guess no more these guys have done it that's pom 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 interesting take by cormier for sure should Pereira be faulted if he's bombing dudes out without having to rely on his wrestling or jujitsu could it just be that his striking is so effective and deadly that he doesn't need to well cormier's responses drew some of the following responses online exactly not his fault people haven't been able to capitalize on however bad his grappling game is we have to look at level of opposition. I love Yuri, but he's a human punching bag that keeps his hands low. Beating him doesn't make you a pound for pound guy. Props to DC for standing on his own business. Normally, you'd have a lot of UFC fighters and friend groups just agreeing with each other, but it's nice to have different takes from legitimate UFC champions. Which wrestler did Pereira face? He was getting taken down by Jan at will. His grappling is non-existent. Yuri is a punching bag, no offense. He got lucky against Rakic. Hill is a good win though. But what do you think? Is Usman onto something with the questions he's raised about Pereira's overall game? Or are you on board with Cormier's take? Now let's take a look at Chael Sonnen sends a message to Michael Chandler. The days continue to mount in terms of when was the last time we saw Michael Chandler fight. As a result, voices calling on Chandler to close the book on the possibility of fighting Conor McGregor keep getting louder and louder. One of the loudest and more charismatic of those voices is Chael Sonnen. If you've been following the McGregor vs Chandler drama, you know that it's been nearly two years now since the UFC first announced the stars were going to fight. Finally, after months and months of speculation and debate, the two were booked to battle at UFC 303 last month. But McGregor dropped out of the contest after breaking his pinky toe. Well, since then, Chandler has claimed that he thinks the fight could finally happen soon. But during a recent episode of the Good Guy Bad Guy podcast, the American gangster called on Chandler to move on. By the end of the year, Michael Chandler will finally assume his new role as a weatherman. I feel that's what he's prepping for. Okay, now picture, <laughs> but picture him. Picture what he's asking for. He's asking for a fight with Conor McGregor that simply can't happen, but he's staying on it, right? He's staying noble. He's staying dependent. 
Picture Michael Chandler wearing rain gear. Okay, I'm talking about the yellow jacket. The hood is up. He's got a microphone. He's broadcasting a potential storm coming while he's standing in the middle of the Sahara Desert because that is as much opportunity as he's going to have to fight Conor McGregor. He's got to move on. You said that Chandler's your guy. I feel the same way towards him. I feel when Chandler fights, right, there's a brotherhood. We're all wrestlers, and it's just one of those situations. He's got to move on. He, he, he allegedly all in the last week has been offered a world title fight against Islam then he got in the way of his own headline and stepped in front of it and has called out Nathan Diaz for the spear. Now I got all sorts of problems with that one different weight class two he called out a guy that's not even signed to the organization. Now we all know MMA is a crazy sport and anything can happen. Next week the UFC could announce that McGregor and Chandler are going to fight say in November. But you can understand why Sonnen is highly skeptical of that happening and why he wants Chandler to take another fight. McGregor's never seemed too pumped up about fighting the former Bellator champ, and the Notorious star has a lot of pull with the UFC. If he and Nate Diaz called for their rubber match to go down this year, could the promotion pass on that opportunity, especially following Diaz's recent win over Jorge Masvidal in boxing? What do you think? Next up, UFC fight updates. The UFC's ridiculously busy schedule will continue throughout the end of the year, and as a result, matchmakers continue to book fights for the promotion's upcoming cards. One of the more recent fights that has been reported is a middleweight fight between contenders Brendan Allen and Nazardine Imovov. The two will throw hands at the UFC September 28th card in Paris, France. What's also interesting about this is that it wasn't long ago that Allen said he wasn't going to head to France to fight Imovov unless the bout served as a main event. The card is currently expected to feature Benoit Saint-Denis and Renato Moicano getting after it in the headliner, so it looks like the UFC must have convinced Allen to make the trek across the pond anyways. And speaking of the UFC's next card in Paris, recently it was also reported that Francis Umar Sai will face South Korean light heavyweight Da Woo Jung at the event. A couple of new matchups have also reportedly been finalized for the UFC's August schedule. Carol Rosa will fight Pani Kianzad at UFC Vegas 95 on August 10th, and Song Kanan will fight Ricky Glenn at UFC 305 on August 17th. Dracus Duplessis drops sparring partner. Dracus Duplessis has been in the news lately on account of the verbal warfare he's been engaging in with Israel Adesanya, but more recently, we were provided a reminder of what the middleweight champ can do in the cage. After months of feuding, Duplessis and Adesanya will throw hands in the main event of UFC 305, which is going down on August 17th in Perth, Australia. The fight will mark the first time Adesanya has fought since he lost the middleweight title to Sean Strickland last September, and then announced that he was taking a break from fighting. Leading up to UFC 305, Duplessis has been questioning whether Adesanya has one foot out the door on his fighting career. Well, all the trash talking aside, it's clear Duplessis is also training hard for UFC 305. Case in point, recently a video was shared out which shows DDP flooring a sparring partner with a body shot. Might we see Adesanya comment on this footage? And who do you think is going to take the much discussed fight between these rivals? Magomed Ankalaev breaks silence on Alex Pereira fight. Although there's likely a gazillion people who would love to see Alex Pereira fight John Jones next, increasingly it looks like Poetan will battle Magomed Ankalaev. Following Pereira's jaw-dropping stoppage of Yuri Prohaska at UFC 303 last month, he repeated his desire to fight for the heavyweight crown. While that spiked talk about Pereira vs Jones as we discussed, the latter is expected to fight Stipe Miocic next. Further, Tom Aspinall set to defend the interim heavyweight belt against Curtis Blades at UFC 304. In the meantime, Ankalaev has been driving hard for a fight with Pereira. After all, the Dagestani fighter has not lost a bout since 2018, and he's riding a 12-fight undefeated streak. Well, recently, the well-rounded fighter spoke with TMZ, and while doing so, Ankalaev said talks are underway to book a fight with Poetan. Via translator, Ankalaev was quoted saying this, I believe that's the next one. It's been a long time in the making. We're waiting for contracts to be signed, and I think there's no way he escapes this one. I think we're going to face each other. As of now, it's in deep negotiations. It's really up to Pereira to confirm it, but I think logically, with all the teams looking into it, that it's the logical outcome. When you consider everything that's going on at heavyweight right now, it's not surprising to hear the UFC is working on Pereira vs Ankalaev. The big question is, if and when these two fight, will Ankalaev prove to be Pereira's biggest test to date at 205, like many believe he will be? What do you think? The MMA community reacts to the UFC 306 main card getting leaked on the French UFC broadcast. It'll feature both Ilya Topuria vs Max Holloway and Sean O'Malley vs Marab Debashvili. Here's how the MMA community reacted. This has been the rumored main events for weeks now, always comes out before officially announced. Dana is not happy right now. 
This may be the greatest card of all time, man. That would explain why Dana won't give Connor the sphere, but I think they'll do Connor in December and let Jones headline MSG in November. As long as Sean O'Malley isn't the main event, I'm good. Imagine they make this card more stacked than UFC 300. If Sean headlines over Max, I will KMS. He won't. Well, someone's getting fired. So a Mexican Independence Day card with no Mexicans fighting in a main or co-main? Okay. Top comments. O'Malley winning an SB is effing pathetic, dude. Poetan is literally king of the UFC right now in every single facet. Ankalaev being a grappling machine is hilarious. Dude barely finished Anthony Smith on the ground and is mostly a striker. His ground game has not proven itself whatsoever. But now, he's a grapple machine just because he's Dagestani. Usman talks a lot for someone who's lost three fights in a row. Maybe he should focus on himself. Usman talks a lot for someone with only one submission in his entire professional record. And when is wrestling requirement to be on the pound-for-pound -pound list? 